Welcome everyone to Self Principle. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. Now, today's topic is all about whole grains. In my own personal life, my family and I, we love to wake up in the morning and have a nice bowl of oatmeal with some berries in there. And of course, using some of the plant-based milks like almond milk or soy milk and so forth. But the question is, is there are so many different types of whole grains. Are some better than others? and are some worse than others and you need to be careful about. So with that, let's dive into today's topic. Let's look at some research and see if we can help you make a better decision for your own family. Now, before we dive into the research, it's important to get a little bit of background going on why whole grains are so important. When we look at the evidence around it, we know that whole grains are rich in fiber, they're rich in antioxidants, they're rich in phytochemicals. If you look at human trials, well-designed trials, what they show is is that whole grains can increase resting metabolic rate, they can reduce fat mass or fat storage that we end up having, they can actually help promote that negative energy balance that we're looking for because of the fiber content, because of the fact that more energy is actually going out in the stool, and because of the impact on resting metabolic rate. Other things that are really important about whole grains are that they can increase insulin sensitivity, which is really important. They can also improve lipids and the lipid profile of what the bad lipids to good lipid profile looks like. And lastly, but not least, they can also help to lower systemic inflammation. So let's look at an interesting study that came out in 2020 that really tackles the idea of what is the relationship between different types of whole grains and type 2 diabetes. Now, this is a particularly large study because it's looking at three prospective cohorts, which means they're looking at three studies going forward in time. The first is the Nurses' Health Study. That was from 1984 to 2014. You have the Nurses' Health Study 2, 1991 to 2017. You have the Health Professionals' Follow-Up Study, which was from 1986 to 2016. Now, all together, they had about 158,000 women and about 36,000 men. The big thing in all of these participants was that they did not have diabetes, cardiovascular disease or cancer at the start of the study. And they did a very good job of getting questionnaires every two years. What's really interesting about these three prospective studies is that the response rate, meaning the people who were actually turning in the surveys every two years, was greater than 90%. This gives us a much better idea of what their eating patterns were like in these close to 200,000 participants going on. And then lastly, the average follow-up they had was 24 years. So in this one, they were specifically looking at seven different types of whole grains. One was the whole grain cold breakfast cereals. Another one was oatmeal, dark bread, brown rice, popcorn, wheat germ, and added bran. So When you think about these seven categories, it's important to understand that not all of them are the same. If you look at, for example, the fiber per 100 grams, and I picked 100 grams because this way we can standardize the fiber, you'll find that wheat gram comes in at a whopping 43 grams per 100 gram serving size. Raw oat bran, on the other hand, is about 15 grams. Popcorn, surprisingly, is 14 grams. Wheat germ is 13 grams, dark bread is 6 grams, oatmeal is 1.7 grams, and brown rice, depending on if it's cooked or raw, is actually 3.5 grams raw or 1.5 grams cooked per 100 grams. Okay, so now that we have the foundation, what did they find in this particular study? Well, when they compared just all of the different types of whole grains from the highest to the lowest consumption, they found that there was a 29% decrease in the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. And then when they went on to look at, for example, people having one or more serving per day versus those having really hardly anything, meaning less than one serving per month. In the whole grain cold breakfast cereal, there was a 19% reduction. Dark bread had a 21% reduction in the risk of diabetes. But here's what's so interesting. Popcorn actually had an 8% increase in the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Now, we're going to get into popcorn in a second. Now, in some of the other types of whole grains, people weren't consuming them as frequently, so they looked at two or more servings per week versus less than one serving per month. So for oatmeal, there was a 21% reduction. Added bran was 15% reduction. 
brown rice was 12% reduction and wheat germ was 12% reduction. So far, what we're seeing here is that if you're getting whole grains for breakfast, whether it's oatmeal, whether it's added bran, whether it's the whole grain cold breakfast cereals, not the ones that are highly processed with sugar and everything else, but really trying to be simple in the whole grain side, you have a really nice drop in your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. But now let's tackle the other issue, which is really what the heck is up with popcorn and why is there an increase? Remember, we talked about popcorn and how much fiber it has. So why would you see an increase in the risk of diabetes? And it wasn't just an increase. What they were really seeing was that there's this J-shaped, which means there's an optimal serving, which was about half a serving per day. As you got to about one or more serving per day, the risk of type 2 diabetes actually started increasing. Now, people love their popcorns. I can tell you in my own family, we have a homemade popcorn popper. We like it because of the fact that studies like this talk about the risk of microwavable popcorn that comes in packages. But we love our popcorn maker and it's awesome. So then the question is, is what's the problem? Well, it's not just us who love our popcorns. Americans consume 15 billion quarts of popcorn annually. But here's the issue. 70% is home popped and pre-popped, meaning it's coming in microwavable packages ready to go. Now, we already said popcorn has a lot of fiber, right? It has about 14 and a half grams per 100 gram serving. And it's one of those foods that actually has a high satiety index, which means it actually makes you feel full pretty easily. But here's the problem. Most popcorns, not all of them, but most of them have lots of stuff that's added to them. There's added salt, there's added butter, there's added sugar. And a number of brands of popcorns are really ultra processed foods because there's so much stuff that they add in them. If you look at the labels on a lot of these popcorns, you'll see all these names you can't pronounce. And some popcorns still have some trans fats that are found in them. Now, Along with all of these things, there's another issue, and that issue has to do with popcorn packaging. You see, some of the microwavable popcorn packaging has perfluoroalkyl substances. Now, the reason these perfluoroalkyl substances are such a big deal is because they're linked with a number of problems. They're linked with poor glucose metabolism, they're linked with weight gain, and they're linked with higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes. And that's why if you're thinking about popcorn, remember, popcorn by itself is a great food, but the fact that there's so much stuff added to it is what really creates all the issues. So what's the bottom line? What can you take away from this video and this podcast? One, consuming higher amounts of whole grains is a great thing to do, and you should definitely focus on that in your own diet. But number two, Popcorn, the one that has all sorts of added stuff, is actually linked to higher risk of diabetes, especially at one or more servings per day, simply because of all of those unhealthy ingredients they add. I want to thank you guys so much for checking out this episode. I would really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button. I would love to see a review on the podcast and Apple Podcasts, iTunes, and so forth. That's how we support this work going on. Please share this with your friends. And if you have any questions, put it in the comments, send me an email, and I would love to hear from you guys. As always, thank you so much for your support, and I'll see you next time.